Okay, so your first step is to identify your asymptotes, your roots, the factors that go for them, and then what's the last thing? It's the easiest thing to forget. People get, what do you think is the biggest mistake that students get wrong on this problem? Any thoughts? Not A. They usually get the A. They know how to plug in the pretty points. They, they don't square the factors correctly, or they forget to check for what needs to be squared in the first place. All right, so that's what we want to watch for. So this asymptote on the left, that's at negative 3. The coordinating factored form is x plus 3. On either side of that asymptote, it's going away. Does away mean squared or not squared? Not squared. So there's our factor. It's good to go. This asymptote is x equals 2. Its coordinating factor or corresponding is x minus 2. The behavior on either side is that it's coming together. Does that mean it needs to be squared or not squared? Squared. So do I have any more asymptotes? No, so we did, we did that fine. How many roots are there? Two. So there's one here at negative four, zero. What factor gives me that? X plus four. Is it bouncing or crossing there? Bouncing. So what does that mean? Squared or not squared? Squared. Um, what's the T word for bounce that's on your shady sheet? Tangent, right, tangent. It's tangent at that point, so it's squared. Uh -huh. This point or root is negative 2, 0. Its factor is x plus 2. D is it tangent or crossing there? Crossing. So does it need to be squared? No. And do you see any more roots or x-intercepts anywhere? Did we take care of all of them? So then we set up our general form for our equation. y equals a, and then we put, what goes on top? The root factors or the asymptote factors? Roots. And so that's these right here. So x plus 4 squared times x plus 2. And then the asymptote factors go on the bottom. The heck? That's x plus 3 and x minus 2 squared. So then um, we want to solve for a, but we have x's and y's everywhere. So it would be really great if we had numbers to put in for those x's and y. How can I find numbers for them? The pretty point, right? This point that was pointed out to you right there, get it pointed out to you. So that's negative one, one. Which one of those goes in for x? Negative one, and so therefore the one goes in for y. So one in for y. A stays a because we're trying to figure it out, and a negative one goes in. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit lazy here just to save us some time. <laughs> Are you ready for a little bit lazy? I'm just going to write over what I, my red stuff. You ready for that? You can handle that. I'm pretty sure you can. One is for y, negative one for all the x's. And then we have to do our order of operations. You simplify your parentheses first. There's parentheses everywhere. This set is negative one plus four, which is three. This set, negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And then after parentheses for order of operations, you do exponents. That means right here, 3 is squared. That becomes 9. Down here, negative 3 is squared. What does that give you? What kind of 9? Positive, right? Not negative 9. So that's 9. So here's what we got to catch you up. 1 equals a times 9 times 1 over 2 times 9. You are welcome to multiply those together and get 18 on the bottom and 9 on top. You are also welcome to just cancel the 9s right here. That would leave you a over 2. And then how, what would you multiply both sides by? Whatever's in your denominator. And you get 2 equals a. And you're done. True or false, are you done? No, right? You're not done, but you did successfully find A. 
which you have to plug back into your general form. So this is your final answer. Y equals 2 times. Oh my gosh, it's so much writing. Who got that perfectly first time around before I ever said anything out of my mouth? Excellent job. Who pretty much had all of it right except they forgot to square things and it messed them up? Okay, but now you'll remember to do the squares, right? You won't forget. All right. So there was your warm-up. That was a quick review of what we did yesterday. Um, we have a lesson today. It's the last new material before your guess what? Test, right? Which is Thursday. So tomorrow we'll work on, We have you have all of class to work on your test review. If you haven't, picked up a test review yet the extras are on the back table with the calculators but don't get it right now wait till after the lesson so your lesson is on the back of your warm up so turn your warm up over um were there any homework questions that i could address for the good of the group right now no homework questions math 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 Oh yeah, this is funny. I mean, I thought it was funny, which isn't saying a whole lot. I think everything is funny. It's really bad, right? <laughs> the girl in my second period, she's always going, did you get that one off Facebook again? And I'm like, yes, I got that off Facebook. Um, I was reading something today about Facebook moms. So apparently I'm a Facebook mom with dad humor. So I'm all the stereotypes all in one. Like I'm, I'm, I got it all. Um, and just in case you didn't read it backwards, allow me to spoil the joke for you. It says even more stupid. <laughs> all right, math. Okay. So here's what we're doing. How, how many examples do you see there? How many examples? Two. So this is going to go fast. Nothing about today's lesson is hard, like individually. What's going to be difficult is keeping it straight, what you're supposed to do and when. Um, it can get real confusing real fast, especially if you're not already a ninja at your shrady sheet. If you're still not best friends with your shrady sheet, you need to become that way as quickly as possible because your test is Thursday. You definitely don't want to be spending your test time on Thursday like flipping back and forth on your shrady trying to find stuff because you haven't been practicing enough. So please avoid that. Today is the H part of shrady, okay? Um, these are talking about, so the H stands for hole, which is an undefined point in the graph where there usually would have been a vertical asymptote. Which part of the rational function equation do we get vertical asymptote information from? The bottom, right? So remember, so keep that in the back of your head. The bottom can never equal zero. And so when no factors cancel, which is everything we've done so far, the bottom gave you a vertical asymptote. Today, a factor will cancel. And in that case, what the bottom gives you is just a hole in the graph, a point that will be undefined. Okay. So it begins the same way as all the other Schrady problems. You still factor the numerator and denominator. So that's so we're still starting with the S step. So here's S. S for sh in our Schrady. Um, stands for simplify. You have to factor first. Which piece of the fraction doesn't factor? That we don't have to do anything with. The bottom. So x minus 4. What factoring method do I need for the top? The numerator. What kind of special number is 16? It's a square, right? It's a perfect square. So x squared is also a perfect square. They're being subtracted, which means you're taking the difference. What method is that? The difference of two squares. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. And so the difference of two squares means you're basically just square rooting each of them, and you're making a minus version and a plus version. So write that down. x minus 4, x plus 4. And then you have your unfactorable x minus 4 on the bottom. Um, on the off chance that you never remember or recognize difference of two squares, you can always do cross method here because you're basically saying what multiplies to AC, which is negative 16, and adds to B, there's no B term, so you know that it is 0. So what multiplies negative 16 adds to 0, 4, and 4, 4, negative 4. 
which is the same as difference of squares. All right, so something happens here that hasn't happened in all of our other shradies so far. Cancel. What cancels here? The x minus 4, the same on top and bottom. Cancel, cancel. What are you left over with? x plus 4. This is your simplified form. This new equation is the shape of your graph. What does the graph of x plus 4 look like? What? It's linear, right? It's just a line. So we're not going to have vertical asymptotes. We're not going to have horizontal asymptotes. None of that special stuff. We're just going to have a straight line with a hole in it somewhere. So we've got to figure out where that hole is going to be. Okay. So simplified form, this is going to determine from here on out what our graph looks like. Um, but we've got to figure out where the discontinuity is going to be. So that's our h step. So I want you to look at the h part of your shrady. Did you get your, did I ask you to get your shrady sheets out? Did I forget? Okay, go ahead and get your shrady sheets out, please. <laughs> 